have the puck. That was a spectacular launch of the largest and most powerful rocket in the world. It looked amazing as it soared into the blue skies of Texas. The second test flight went further than the first with both stages of the rocket separating as planned. Despite an explosion occurring in the booster stage after separation, it was a successful experience for SpaceX. Are you ready for a deep analysis of the second orbital test flight of Starship? Only on today's episode of Alpha Tech. The Starship and Super Heavy vehicle took off from SpaceX's Starbase test site in Boca Chica, Texas around 8.03 a.m. Eastern. The launch process was delayed for a few minutes due to a late propellant load issue on the upper stage, but no other problems were reported during the countdown. Just north of Boca Chica on South Padre Island, hundreds of spectators gathered this morning to watch the launch. They cheered as the orange glow from the 33 Repper engines of the Starship's first stage illuminated the plume as the massive rocket began its ascent. We can observe that the Super Heavy boosters appeared to perform normally during its ascent without any obvious failures of its Raptor engines unlike the first flight in April where several Raptors shut down. Starship then ignited its six engines and separated from the booster about 2 minutes and 45 seconds after liftoff, testing a new hot stage technique where engine ignition takes place before stage separation to improve performance. Mind you, this new technique is new to the Starship system, not to the whole of aerospace. Just wanted to clarify that. However, as the flip maneuver progressed, signs of trouble emerged in the booster's engine section. Despite the initial success of hot staging, a closer analysis revealed issues during the flip, with several engines failing to relight. We're going to take that data and improve the hot staging sequence and probably improve the hardware itself for the next flight, SpaceX quality engineering manager Kate Tice said during the live webcast. Super Heavy then planned to perform a boost back maneuver to prepare for a splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. However, at about three and a half minutes after liftoff, the booster broke apart in what SpaceX called a rapid unscheduled disassembly. Pretty common term in rocket engineering, though it took a bit of time to figure out what caused the RUD. SpaceX hosts of its launch webcast noted that one purpose for the flight was to test how the booster could manage the stresses from the hot staging. Then, Starship would continue to ascend with the plan to shut down the engines eight and a half minutes after liftoff. SpaceX had hoped to establish signal acquisition with the spacecraft at its target altitude of about 150 miles or 250 kilometers. However, near the end of the burn, communication was lost with the vehicle. At the time of the remote signal loss, Starship was at an altitude of 148 kilometers and moving at about 24,000 kilometers per hour, which is nearly orbital velocity. SpaceX mission managers, including CEO and founder Elon Musk himself, were eagerly awaiting updates in the live broadcast. We're not targeting orbit today. We're targeting almost orbit, said Siva Bharadvaj, a SpaceX operation engineer, adding that the goal was to get to a thrust profile similar to what we would need for orbit, but also energy level that the ship would need to dissipate for re-entry. We think we may have lost the second stage, John Innsbrucker, principal integration engineer at SpaceX said on the webcast. He said the automated flight termination system on Starship was activated very late in the burn and did not indicate why. The plan for the flight was to perform nearly one trip around the planet, not go into orbit. Starship would have re-entered and splashed down near Hawaii 90 minutes after liftoff. It's not surprising that Starship's second test flight flew longer and higher than the first test flight on April 20th, which failed during the separation phase and exploded due to remote detonation. Therefore, SpaceX still considers the second test a success. The final remote measurements from today's launch determined Starship's altitude to be 148 kilometers or 91 miles, significantly higher than the space boundary of 62 miles or 100 kilometers. Honestly, it's such an incredibly successful day, even though we did have a rapid unscheduled disassembly of both the Super Heavy Booster and the ship, Tice said. That's great. We got so much data, and that will all help us improve for our next flight. So, what's next for SpaceX? Well, how about we take a look over here at the launch pad, which many are curious to see if it's functioning properly after the launch with the thrust of all 33 Raptor engines at once. 
Back in April, the nearly 17 million pounds of power from Super Heavy created a large well of lava below the launch pad and sent debris flying up to 10 kilometers from the landing site. But today, what happened? It remained intact and <laughs> spick and span. It seems like all it needs is a quick polish, a few coats of paint, and voila, it's done. That's what I can say about the entire launch pad system. All thanks to the water deluge system and massive steel cooling plate working extremely extremely efficiently during this launch. Although Starship didn't complete its mission, this is still a victory, showcasing significant progress in SpaceX's research and development. The atmosphere around the launch was fantastic. The crowd at South Padre Island wasn't the only one cheering for Starship today. Right after the Starship launch, SpaceX immediately posted on its social media homepage, saying, congratulations to the entire SpaceX team on an exciting second integrated flight test of Starship. Starship successfully lifted off under the power of all 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster and made it through stage separation. A, uh, great guy once said, uh, under it, I thought it was over it. <laughs> With a promising commitment to the ambitious goals that are sure to be achieved in the future, CEO Elon Musk also congratulated his team on X. With a test like this, success comes from what we learn, and today's test will help us improve Starship's reliability as SpaceX seeks to make life more multi-planetary. Additionally, Bill Nelson had this to say, congrats to the team who made progress on today's flight test. Spaceflight is a bold adventure demanding a can-do spirit and daring innovation. Today's test is an opportunity to learn, then fly again. Together, NASA and SpaceX will return humanity to the moon, Mars, and beyond. Adding on to the accolades was Jim Free, NASA's exploration head, who chimed in with each test represents a step closer to to putting the first woman on the moon with the Artemis 3 Starship Human Landing System. Looking forward to seeing what can be learned from this test that moves us closer to the next milestone. But hold on, that's not all Starship is set out to do. It also has to fulfill Musk's grand ambition of colonizing Mars. When Musk first introduced the Starship concept, it was then called the Mars Colonial Transporter. After fleshing out details of the system at the International Astronautical Conference, Congress in September of 2016, it would change its name to the Interplanetary Transporter. As these former monikers show, the new spacecraft is designed to help make humanity an interplanetary species, a long-held dream of Musk's. Though the timeline seems to continually shift from year to year, the billionaire entrepreneur envisions Starship as the vehicle that will allow humanity to establish a sustainable permanent presence off Earth. The breakthrough that could make this happen is Starship's reusability. The new system stands as the evolutionary next step beyond SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, which now regularly launches with previously flown boosters. However, only the Falcon 9's first stage and payload fairings are reusable, and reuse usually takes a few weeks at a minimum. The Falcon 9's second stage is not reusable and is disposed of after each flight. To sum this all up, today's Starship debut is a milestone that not only showcases SpaceX's progress in the Starship program, but also signals an increase in the launch cadence for the new vehicle. This will help Starship quickly enhance its reliability to carry out the planned missions. NASA's contract requires one unpiloted lunar test flight before astronauts will make a landing attempt. Artemis managers continue to officially target late 2025 for the first lunar landing with astronauts on board. NASA's moon program aside, at least three all-civilian missions have been booked to date. Billionaire Jared Isaac who chartered the first private crew Dragon flight to low Earth orbit in 2019, plans to be aboard for the first piloted orbital flight of a starship as part of his Polaris Dawn program. Japanese billionaire Yusaku Meizawa, who paid the Russians for a visit to the International Space Station in 2021, has also chartered a Starship flight, dubbed Dear Moon, to carry him, an assistant, and 10 artists and influencers on a privately funded Around the Moon voyage. A third civilian Starship flight carrying 12 passengers, including Space Station veteran Dennis Tito and his wife, also has been booked. Tito paid the Russians an estimated $20 million for a visit to the International Space Station in 2001 
one and says he can't wait to get back into space and share the experience with his wife. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below because your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. And for that, we thank you again, and we hope to see you again next time.